it's uh, why I left my nine to five job to work on a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, um, I have not done that. Uh, I'm very attached to my dogs. Uh, they're a big part of my life. And I, I, I have known some people that I've worked on cruise ships. And Sounds miserable. I, they had the other. Did they? To they say, like it? Yeah. You know, I've I mean, especially if you're. Good. You're into traveling. You're already living that nomadic digital lifestyle. If you're doing something like this, right? If if you're trying to be, you know, a writer on Medium or whatever platform you're trying to be on, or if you're trying to get on YouTube and get a bunch of pl- followers, right? Like, I get that. But if you also still need a supplement and you want to travel, like, why not jump on these? You can be a bartender. You can be a blackjack dealer. You can be a janitor, housekeeper, whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah, that's fair. That's pretty cool. So yeah. I, I like that. I like that aspect for sure. I remember the uh, finding the, the the talking points on that, and it was a couple of years ago. And I remember being like, "Wow, I really didn't take advantage of the freedom of bartending nearly enough." I just I didn't realize it, right? And where it came to me is Kevin and I were doing some trip up in uh, Ure, 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 and they had all these like for sale like not for sale for higher yeah, bartenders right. and i was like it never i mean one it's hard because then you have to have either two leases that you're renting which is really expensive or two leases don't make a right <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> or they do or they do <laughs> or like you have to do short-term leasing which they rake you over their coals on the cost on that but like the general concept, I was like, man, I didn't even think about the fact that, like, over the summer, because I don't like the cold, I don't like the snow, I know everyone's like, well, don't be in Colorado. The weather's great here 95% of the time. It was 55 doesn't, degrees today. Gorgeous, right? So, like, doesn't mean I want to be up in the snow, like, all winter, but I could totally have just, like, up and moved and, some, like, lived up in the mountains and bartended, and some of those places will even, like, help you out with your lodging. Yeah. And I just, I never thought of... How could I leverage bartending to just travel the world and live in new places constantly? And what a fun concept that it really yeah, if is. you're on a tour boat, a cruise ship, you can't take your dog, but like everywhere else you can. Mm. And and I just, I learned it too late in life. Already was at a house and husband and it just kind of sounds boring. Settled down. It's definitely not boring. <laughs> <laughs> now we actually travel and get to travel. Yeah. yeah. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Uh, versus traveling to work but I was like man I just I never crossed my mind when I was in my 20s to just be like let's use this as a chance to live keep, keep everything in my Honda Civic size and pack it all up <laughs> with my dog and move around to live in a totally different state just bartend you can mm-hmm. literally go to any town and find a bartending job now ideally you have like full bartending experience that really opens the doors versus just like beer tending but like opens the you can literally go anywhere and just get set up. You would have to do very little research. Yeah. Just go and be like, this town seems cool. Go find a job. Yeah. It's and I know it's a little different post COVID now, but what a cool concept this is. Like that you could do. And why do little, you think it's different post COVID? I think there's more jobs open for bartending. But they were that they were more filled before, would be my guess. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry, that distracted me. I was like, I don't understand. No, you're good. Uh, I think I was like 18 and uh, ish, so 20 years ago. And there was this website called... Four scars and 20 years ago. Exactly. Have we already talked about this? I'm having deja vu. No, I don't think Ooh. so. Uh, it was called coolworks.com. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember this. Okay. Yeah. Did you go onto that site? Yeah, forever ago. Yeah, forever ago. Oh, I, I probably think- didn't read it, though. I think they're like the original vagabond worker <laughs> right? for the forest service. Was, wasn't even just like it was like going and working at resorts yeah. and either bartending again or working at the ski lifts, whatever you wanted to do. Um, I feel like those skewed my mind, though. I was like, I always wanted to do it, but I've always had my dogs. And um, I'm not saying that every place doesn't allow your dogs nowadays they're probably actually more open to it nowadays but um and maybe i was just too scared back then to go and do it but um i think i think it was that same i kind of limited the viewpoint of like oh these are the jobs you get to go travel and do these cool things with because we we both used to deal cards and we're like all right that's like part of the perk of dealing cards is like 
we could go live in Vegas. We could go do a cruise ship. We could go do all these things. Yeah. And it just literally never crossed my mind as a bartender that you could mm. more easily same, same. pack it all up and just go bartend somewhere else. So yeah. if you like to travel and it's totally you're not doable. locked down, like what a what a cool way to spend a year. There, there's a couple other cool websites out there if this is something that you're actually uh, interested in. The, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is, is Poached, the Poached app. Uh, basically, you can go on and, well, well, fuck, Indeed. All you need is Indeed, right? Like, you can literally go wherever. Yeah. But there's also some other cool apps that are more uh, uh, networking focused as opposed to... Uh, not as intimate as Indeed might be, right? Like Indeed yep. can get you there and it can reach its little arms out in many different places, but uh, the smaller ones can be more intimate and in where you have uh, a network of people that are also traveling that you can talk to, be in touch with, uh, get reviews from, yep. et cetera. So, uh, et cetera. So depending uh, what you're into, uh, traveling digital nomadic lifestyle like it's it's totally doable yeah super um, cool super cool thing yeah and i'm not saying just like up and leave a place you know i don't, I don't even know if that makes sense if i want to get into it like i appreciate the flexibility of being able to go from state to state country to country if you wanted to do that yeah right um uh but not uh being shady about it either. I also think it's an acceptance from the business establishment's perspective as well, right? Like they understand it's, it's like having seasonal workers, right? You know, they're only going to be here for X amount of time. Yep. You're not looking to give them a 401k Honestly. or uh, pay their health insurance yeah. or anything by that means. Um, On the resume aspect, I'd probably just ask, like, let them know ahead of time, this is my jam, this is what I do. And then have your previous employees basically leave you a review, start yourself up a website that's your resume, and they have all the reviews of the places. So that way you don't look like you just can't commit to a job. You're like, oh, no, no, I just don't want to stay in a place longer than six months or whatever it is. And as long as you have great reviews, then people shouldn't care. And that would really show like that extra step of caring that they're like, all right, you're not crappy, you're not just a someone going to come in and then jump ship it's that's also kind of vulnerable right like opening yourself up uh so like it's a reverse indeed or a reverse glass door so and instead of reviewing the employer your um you need someone to build your website happy to build that for you i i hear mustard later it's pretty good at that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was my favorite article just yeah. because uh, i love to travel i love I also love being behind the bar, and, and I, I do miss it uh, for sure. Or being behind a uh, table games table, whatever it might be. Or serving. I love serving. I feel like I crush serving so much. But, I'm but, awful at it. But then it gets old, too, because, like, I mean, if you're just dealing the same nacho every day, like, God, man, I got to fucking grow, too. I mean, yeah. it, just, it can't just be about processed cheese and the cheese is cold. It's Or... Or the cheese is amazing, right? It's, cheese whiz, you have a lot of opinions. Today I do. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't happen every day. Some days I'm just sitting here. Thanks, Paps, and the cheese whiz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bringing it back to Prohibition. Bringing it back. Yeah, what about you? Um, do you have any favorite articles over this last week? Yeah, I really enjoyed the... Uh, there was a 21 year, 23 year old, sorry, in Hong Kong, I believe. And she used a $150 homebrew kit and has launched an entire brewery that's growing and it's a six figure business. And you're like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That's just breweries. But what she did was really cool was she was inspired by the amount of food waste. Mm -hmm. And so she creates all of the beer from uh, bread waste. Yeah. So she's like bringing it back to ancient times of like brewing yeah. beer. And it took them, uh, we don't have it in the notes, but I think it took her like two or three years to finally get the recipe down to where it was like pinpointed good, tasted good. They were able to kind of get all yeah. the flavor profile. And I love that. Like what a fun. That's super cool. And it came up over COVID that they just were like, well, we have nothing else to do. So they didn't want the waste and they bought a homebrew kit and just started brewing beer and now she's 
kicking ass in Hong Kong brewing beer. Yeah. I think like, she was an exchange student or something that was is a, what I read. It, yeah. it doesn't super matter. Just the Breer? fact that. B-R-E-E-R. What? Is that the name? Beer? Breer? Breer. Breer. Yeah. yeah. yeah right. um, Not beer. Breer. 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 Your breer air. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Yeah, fair. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, like, it's just a cool story. There isn't really, like, a ton else to say about it other than she found, like, this niche or something she's passionate about, and it started from a homebrew kit, and what mm. a cool, like, started from the bottom, now you're here. Bringing it back. Bringing uh, it back. It's yeah, just a cool I love, story. I love you just a good those entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial yeah, I love success entrepreneurial story. story. Yep. Yeah. So um, good. Just a good time. Mm. Good time. Oh, cruise ships. Dun, 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 dun. What else? What else did you learn this week? Oh my God! What did I learn about hams? <laughs> uh, actually, what did really you like, learn about hams? I, I did like. Well, I do love a ham. I do not. So that's probably why I no? didn't read it. No, ham. That might be my least favorite beer I've ever had. Uh, natural ice is my least favorite. That's no, my second no, no, least. Sorry, Keystone. Keystone Light. Um, and which is hard because. Uh, um, in the off flavor tastings for <laughs> your Cicerone certification, like the the couple that we've been to, uh, they use Keystone as the control group, yeah. and I was like, I fucking hate Keystone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what um, yeah, one of the flavors, the, the, the cardboard, the the trans two, yeah, uh, the trans two, oh, it makes me like. We're literally sitting in the middle of this classroom up in Bozeman, and I, I'm going through my flavor profiles. I was like, I got this, I got this. And I was like, and We're sitting kind of like back to back. No, no, no. You were facing me, oh, but yeah. I had like my back, my back toward you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I hear her go, <laughs> I, hate, I hate wet paper. I hate soggy bread. Like, um, I just, so I'm getting good. nauseous just thinking about it. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, but it's a good con- control group. Um, Anyways, hams. So they tell me. So and, they tell me. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, uh, last week was National Lager Day, right? I can't. I think it was like the yeah. 14th or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And anyway, but uh, the there's this craft beer revolution that's taking place up in the northern states of the Mm. u.s and uh specifically minnesota Minnesota. and um south dakota was actually up there on google trends for searching craft beer good for them Uh, colorado was there as well well i would hope so yeah i think there was there was like four breweries the last time i was in sioux falls um Still not very many, but at least the place to go to, right? Yeah, and anyway, so hams, right? Hams. Um, uh, it's really this overarching topic that I feel like, at least for me personally, I've been having to explain myself a lot lately about what it is about beer and what is it, what does it uh, do for me and why do I like it and why have we decided to build an entire company around it, not just from the customer experience perspective or what you're doing well in your tap room perspective, or hey, let us help you push your social media perspective, or let us build your website for you, or hey, what about we put our faces out there and we start a whole podcast and we'll talk about you and let you uh, make up for yourselves if you like what we're saying. Yeah. It has to come from somewhere. So for this specific article, it's, it's, it's about the light logger, right? And it's coming back to those traditional, like, like loggers out there not over complicating recipes right just but when you're doing these loggers they take a lot more time right um because uh, they have to uh, fer- uh ferment at colder temperatures right am i saying that right mm-hmm. um and so for longer. what's that and for longer and for long longer right um um because of the light flavor uh so so there's these little room for it leaves little room for errors, but what people are looking for is just this like super basic, crushable, light lager. Yeah. And anyway, so some of the northern breweries, uh, links will be in the comments. You can check it out. Like that is their sole focus. It's getting back to what inspires them. What yeah. 
what's their tradition? What's their symbol when it comes to why are they in this space? What do they love about beer? And they took things that they love about beer, the light lager, and they're just going to, they're going to crush it. They're going to knock it out of the fucking park. And they did it really, really well. Yeah. And I love that. What What's the, um, you sent me another article That's a day. I was, wondering, I was about, trying to figure out if that was I, in I here. didn't because I stopped at three. Yeah. Um, that, that was going to, oh, God damn it. That was my other favorite article. Hold on. <laughs> the earthquake cast. Yes. We're actually on a cruise ship. <laughs> no. Tells it gets seasick. I do. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was, uh, so, okay, so a couple things that I like about this. I like, they bring up, like, basically kind of having a palate fatigue from having all of these big complex flavors and. People want like Thank the simplicity of, of a good lager. And so. Lagers have been on a comeback for, the, I want to say, the last about three years, like really hitting the comeback and people needing to do them well. Uh, and, and I do think the palate fatigue is part of it. I think it's the drinkable. I think it's people trying to share with more of their family and friends and when they come into town, if they're not necessarily craft beer drinkers. Uh, and honestly, on a hot day, a lager's great. And, oh, and yeah. I mean, I do not love a keystone. A, like, I love a lot of styles of beer, but like, I just want to crush a beer, and that's what great lagers are for. Sure. Uh, they're just refreshing, and they're palate cleansers, and it gives you something to share. It's, it's a crowd pleaser, right? Like, especially if you go home, if you're from an area that doesn't have a lot of craft beer, you come over with something like this, and people are like, what in the world is all this nonsense? I just want, like, to have a beer. And so it gives you that right. beer to share, and it's, 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 I think it's a different kind of gateway into the craft beer scene because now you're hitting a style that has to be done really, really well. And it's different when it was fat tire because you're like, cool, well, that tastes good. That's a totally different beer. It's totally different when someone's like, no, I'm a lager person. I like lagers. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, shit, this is what a good lager tastes like? I had no idea. Mm. Changes the whole conversation piece. So I think there's a couple aspects also of it. Also the fresh aspect. Don't, yeah. I don't want you to overlook that. Not yeah. to interrupt. I'm so sorry. No, no. It's, I, I just think it's a beer. And I also think like you're hitting enough where – People are learning so much about the space that they want to be like, all right, well, can you do this beer well? And I love rice lagers. Man, in the last handful of years, those are my go-to. I just love a rice lager. What do you love about a rice lager? I like that they don't have the funky lager finish. And they're, I want to say, kind of sweet. They're a little bit sweeter, but they're not so sweet like American lagers get. Is where it they're the not wheat? refreshing anymore. Is it the wheat? That... Maybe the rice. No, I mean, if you don't like the lager finish, is it like the, oh. the wheat that you don't care probably, for then? Probably the different yeast that gets used. Yeah. I don't know. I just I think the rice, there's like a different little bit of a mouthfeel to it, and it's it's sweeter without being sweet. Mm. They're so refreshing. I don't know. I'm I'm a yeah. big fan. Like, it's, that'll be my go-to. I will grab a rice lager almost any time it's on the menu. There's a couple of breweries around here that do them really well, mm-hmm. and that is like if it's on, I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to drink the shit Getting out of this rice lager. lager. Yeah. Um, so the the other article that we didn't get in here is a brewery. But we're going to in yeah. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, where was like it? I said, I haven't where seen was, it in a couple it days. From? Talk to me. Talk to me. Where was it from? Mm. Oh, I didn't read that far. I want to say Portland, Maine, because it might be Portland, Maine. What, weren't we already in Portland, Maine? I know because we talked about it, so it came up. Basically, long story short, this brewery does two beers, and that is it. And, and it's kind of similar to the Back Acre Beer Maker uh, in Prague. That's like a really famous old brewery. And they only do one beer. And they came from like this Czech style uh, or the following the Czech traditions of having very few beers on draft. Yeah. It sounded like you said that Back Acre Beer Maker was from Prague. No, no, no. But it's following that these guys got inspired from a brewery from Prague. That's I a see. really old brewery in Prague that has one beer. Um, and so they have a dark, and I think it's a dark lager, if I'm remembering. I don't even think it's a dark stout. It might be a stout. Actually, I think it is. So they have one dark beer, and then they have, like, a lager. And the way you order from them is either the dark, the light, a mix, a.k.a. Oh, my God, I can't think of what it is. The black and tan. Or you order based on the amount of foam. So it's all side pour, all side handles. And so you order based on how much foam you want in your mug. And that's it. And I kind of really, really dig this style of, oh my goodness, Remy, of really simplifying it down because I think it helps with costs. I think it gives people that niche. I mean, we talked about the the cocktail place that did it. Mm -hmm. I'm just really digging that style right now. 
Like, I think it's I, simple. Simple's good. Simple's good. And people know what to expect when you get there. Like, it's not going to be complicated. You're going to have the beers on that they like. And, like, that's it. Like, it's really easy going. And I think, I think people can be into it. It also keeps your costs way lower, too. Yeah. And so, again, if you're not looking to, like, build, grow, expand, and become this massive industry, and you're just like, hey, like, this is my day job, and I love it because I own it, and I get to make it mine. Mm-hmm. And the, the other piece, I wish I remembered the name of the brewery, we can add a link in. Uh, if you go to their site, like, everything is on point for their brand. Like, the events that they bring in. They even had reef making. Reef? Reef making. I never like I've never like even seen that as like an option, but like they're kind of like a rocking bar, so that, like everything had this rock theme, and they did I don't know you have to go check it out. Just the way that they presented everything just seemed so on point to their brand, I would go to and it probably is account. because they have time to focus Maybe. on it. Yeah, and now they don't need to hire out a bunch of other things because they can they have time to focus on it. Mm-hmm. They can do it really well. Remy agrees. Yeah, Arr. it's because Drukin's on the other side of the door. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very happy dog. Yep. So yeah, that that was my other favorite article was the, the little entrepreneur making beer from bread, and then these guys that were like two two styles. Anything like, worth doing is I'm, worth doing. Rad. Like I'm into that like a lot. So I feel like life is just constantly like, how do I simplify this? Because I think how do you we're know your means? we're really good at complicating yeah. the simplest most simple things yeah anyway and we're talking about beer so they're like hey what do you want you want a light beer you want a dark beer you want to mix the two you want some foam let me teach you how foam works sweet Wait, we were in uh when we were in rome <laughs> and we sat down at this super local back alley mm. literally had paper on the tables the waitress awesome. she, it was it was their house yeah yeah, they just opened basically their patio yeah. for people to come and sit at. And our our tour guide was like, this is, the place. This is where you got to go. And, and I don't speak Italian. Uh, none of us do, you know, very little. But uh, and she was basically like wine. And we're like, yep. She goes, you want white or you want red? Yep. No. Sweet. No red. styles, just white or red. Yeah. We're like, cool. Yeah. You want pasta? Yeah. yeah. You Which want, noodle? Yeah. No, do you, yeah. Do you want white sauce? You want red you want sauce? White sauce, yeah. Or you, or I think, I think they had cheese. two, I think they had two noodle options so that it was like white sauce and it was just it was like, fantastic. Oh, oh, well, yeah. And we were definitely, it's not a tourist spot. They were not, no, they didn't love that they had tourists there, but uh, she was cool about it. Uh, I like the lo- like the people there were kind of giving us the stink eye. Like, how do you even know of this place? This is our grandma that's been cooking forever. Like, they were very sweet though, and it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it was well, but, like what again? Though, so this is two it. times on travel that like the best Seven experiences came from these really niched out fun little places. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm into it. I'm really digging that like one, one or two one options. and done. Yeah, I think it's all cool. you need is one. Let you do a lot of things well when you have time <sighs> to do it well. All right, so we had our favorite news that we read about this week, which I actually like. I really enjoyed those. But They're like, inspiring. Yeah, I feel like we kind of started when we were researching stuff. We're like, we don't know what to talk about. And I feel like those were, those were awesome stories. I was a big fan. 